Welcome back to the man who's sitting to my right right here, country music recording artist, Late Nights and Long Necks, which is available next Friday. We're listening to the voice right now of the one-time new artist of the year, Justin Moore. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you, man. I'm assuming Late Nights and Long Necks is not like about Midnight at the Zoo with giraffes, correct? (laughs) That's not what we're talking Uh, about right here. It's pretty (laughs) self-explanatory. A lot of Late Nights and Long Necks went into writing this album. Um, but no, it's funny because we named the album Late Nights and Long Nights because I wrote a song 18, 19 years ago that I wanted to put on an album my entire career. And we knew that it was going to be on this album. Yes. It ended up not being on this album, uh, after we named the, the album Late Nights and Long Nights, but we thought it, w- it was still appropriate for this album. And my wife and I, long story short, my wife and I have a, a, a special affinity for, um, uh, De- Destin, Florida. Uh, we have a home down there and have had for a long time. We met down there. And um, I wrote a lot of my early music down there in the panhandle of Florida. And so we wrote uh, this entire album down there. Not my wife and I, but myself sure. and, and, and your uh, crew. My, my crew, uh, Motley Crew. Um, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, we just went, locked ourselves in our house drank beer and wrote songs and uh, it was probably the funnest experience i've had making an album which i think 12 years into a career is is a mouthful i would say so sure and uh now you've got uh that right there i mean that's you're talking about panhandle florida that's the heart of sec country it is right down there it is you know it's there's it's yeah it's all sec whether it be alabama or mississippi or arkansas or florida or you know and and so um I know they hold meetings down there for SEC stuff. And, sure. Um, so we love that area. We spend as much time down there as we can. We we primarily are in Arkansas, where I'm from, but we spend as much time down there as we can. It's funny, as in the commercial break, um, Justin, you, you mentioned uh, a conference I hadn't heard in a while, the SWAC. Mm-hmm. It, Southwest Conference, yeah, that's what I grew up watching. Sure. You know, we, we were – if I'm not mistaken, we were one of the only two or maybe the only non-Texas school in that conference. And so we grew up obviously hating Texas. Yes. Or I did. Or you and, did. Because my dad made me, <laughs> you know. Um, you grew up hating the Longhorns. Yes. If I'm not mistaken, Chris, can you look this up? I think just today, this is, you know, uh, that – the horns down symbol is now going to be a flaggable offense for a, a, in in the anti celebration. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so worth it. No, it's no, so... no, no. Horns down is now okay. So oh, it, it, it it's is. been flagged in recent years. Oh, is that what it is uh, now? As taunting, but um, you can now horns down. It's, you're now free to horns down. Is yeah. So Greg Burke's Big Twelve coordinator official said of a player quickly flashes horns down for scoring a touchdown. He likely would not be called for a penalty now. Prolonged displays of the signal, of course, used for decades to mock the Texas, will be penalized. So you're fine with if this. If it's directed towards a player or bench. I would take the 15-yard penalty yeah. if that's what it's uh, <laughs> was, uh, Even totally, when it was. Totally fine with it if that's what it does. So you grew up hating Texas Longhorns football or anything Longhorns. Huh? Obviously, I love going and playing in Texas, and I have great friends in Texas. It goes without sure. saying. I st- just don't like the Longhorns uh, because uh, if I didn't hate the Longhorns, my dad would whip my tail to this day. To this because day. that's the way he, <laughs> he raised me, you know. And so, no, you know, we were, um, you know, we've had a rough stretch as of late in, in football, but uh, we were kind of uh, for a for a long stretch in the Southwest Conference. Arkansas was one of the only teams who could who could challenge. Texas, you know, they were so good, mm-hmm. and and uh, I think they're on their way up again, unfortunately. Um, but um, but yeah, we were it, it was a pretty good rivalry, you know, we won our fair share of games against them. Well, now that's a Justin Moore, country music recording artist, here on the Rich Eyes Show. All that said, normally, as I mentioned earlier, uh, in the hour, you could draw a line between Arkansas and Dallas, Texas, in terms of Jerry and Jimmy yeah. and and Cowboys fandom, um, how do you have a Steelers hat on your head right now? It's funny Justin? because uh, most people are Cowboys fans. Um, part of it is proximity. It's, you know, it's four hours from where I live now. 
uh and then and then part of it is obviously the jerry jones connection he was on our only national championship football team in 64 he was an offensive lineman um played for frank frank Brawls and uh, does a lot for the university of arkansas and i'm certainly appreciative i was a huge cowboys fan when i was a kid Love Jimmy Johnson, who was also yeah. a Razorback. Um, and for whatever reason, I don't know why this had this effect on a 10, 12-year-old kid the way that it did. But, you know, back when Aikman, Irvin, uh, all the – Emma Smith, yeah. all those guys were there. I was a huge fan. Jerry fired Jimmy. And I don't know why I cared so much as a child who the coach was, but I loved Jimmy Johnson. And when he fired Jimmy – I said, I will never root for the Cowboys ever again. No kidding. And I don't know why that had such a lasting effect, but it did. And so years later, I thought, I loved pro football, but I, I didn't have a team. And I thought, well, I need to pick a team. And I made great friends with some people from Pittsburgh. My bass player's from Pittsburgh. The guy who started my record label is from Pittsburgh. And I thought, you know, that's a good organization, and they do things the right way for the most part. I'm not sure about getting rid of A.B. and, and Bell, but we'll see. Um, and so that's been about 15 years ago. It's been a pretty good run. Okay, so, so you didn't let, – let's just make this – because I was just about to ask the time on here. So for you as a 10 or 11 or 12-year-old yeah. to make a stand for the coach yeah, and then to go from the Cowboys to the Steelers – and then have, and my dad's a huge Cowboys fan still. Okay, so. that's but what I'm saying is that it would have been a bad time to get off of the triplet bandwagon and then go on the Neil O'Donnell bandwagon <laughs> yeah. for the one championship that yeah. Switzer brought to the Cowboys. That would be bad timing on your. So this was after. Yeah, all this of that. was probably 15 years ago, something okay. like that. So I've I've seen maybe two Super Bowls. Yeah, you said if you're going back to the Super Bowl 40 win where Bettis said farewell in, in his hometown of Detroit and Cower was done at that yes. point, and that's 2000. Yes. Okay. I, I was with that one, and then that was 2005. Pardon uh, me. So, I was okay, with, was I was right with that there. one, and then yeah. uh, being second one. There you go. So the the, the one, one that, against the Cardinals, I yep, think. Right. Not the one that they lost in Dallas to Green Bay. We don't speak of that. One. <laughs> <laughs> we don't speak of that one. And yeah, I, I, look, I, I think it's interesting, Justin Moore here on the Rich Eisen Show, that the, the Steelers this year are going to go into the season with the rare attitude of nobody believes in us. Because in the past several years, the Steelers couldn't say that because, you know, a right. large amount of fans, not just Steelers fans, believe that the Steelers could win. Yeah. Right now, people are kind of wondering what's going on right there. It I, worked for the Patriots last year, so let's hope that it works it for sure us. Did. But, it sure did. Um, you it, know, it, I, I do think it's it, it's obviously warranted, that, that mindset, because arguably they lost the best running back and wide receiver in the league. Um, you know, that could be argued. Yes. But – they're definitely top two, three in the league, each of them. Um, you know, Smith Schuster, I think, is is kind of a stud in, in waiting, in my opinion. Um, I think they had a really good draft. We drafted your boy from Michigan. You're going to love Devin Bush. Uh, I, li I liked the uh, Benny Snell uh, pick, so, too. So many people were not high on him for some reason, and I just saw the way that he dominated his bowl game performance. Yeah. I, I – and he's kind of like that 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 he's Steeler, a Steeler guy yes, kind of guy. I yeah, I don't, I don't. He's not gonna. He's not got blazing speed or, you know. But you roll him downhill and have a good time trying to stop. Yeah, him. Yeah, it, it kind of reminds me of of uh, Connor in a sense, and sure. a little bit of Bettis in him. You know, um, I think he'll I think he'll mold well with with the organization. So, and then they got another receiver. I forget who they got, but a receiver that I think is going to be pretty good from well, a smaller I, school. And I believe in Tomlin. I, I know Steeler fans like to carp on him, and that it's been a they while. They do, and I don't really understand it. He, he would he would have another job literally within sixty. Seconds. I had the opportunity to be with him at a, actually a country music awards show. Um, we were sitting next to each other, and I just let him know that I was a huge Steelers fan and and uh, super super nice guy, great guy, and. Uh, I, I've always been a big fan. So yeah, I hear you, Justin Moore here on, on the Rich Eisen show. And uh, are are you coaching your daughter's basketball team? Is that a is that and a softball team? Okay, yeah. 
So is it is it true then that uh, since you're an Arkansas fan, you brought 40 minutes of hell to your daughter's basketball <laughs> team? Because that would be that would be a little you, aggressive. You, you can only you can only uh, <laughs> defend at half court. Okay, so you're not full. You can't. So bring... we're we're half court trapping now, and we're getting to move in the other direction, man. <laughs> So we're no, trying to create a three on two every time we can. I got to tell you, that's how I, one of the biggest breaks I ever got in my career. I was at Northwestern School of Journalism uh, in a graduate program. And the last few months of the program was in Washington, D.C., where a bunch of local stations across the country that couldn't afford to have a correspondent in Washington, D.C., used us, um, the students, as their local correspondents. And we did pieces, and they, they'd air them, and it was real, real-time experience for us. I was uh, the affiliate that I was affiliated with was uh, Cahog in Fayetteville, Fort Smith, um, 4029, I think the channel was. And I got to um, do a piece on the Arkansas Capitol Hill contingent watching the 40 minutes of hell Nolan Richardson basketball team wow. win it all. And that piece went national because wow. it was about, you know, Clinton was the first fan in the yeah. off, in, in the Oval Office at the time. So it was a good time to be a hog. The, I mean, that 40 minutes of hell, you know, Corliss Williamson and, and that whole team was amazing. Yeah, it was fun to, I, 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 you know, obviously when I was growing up, we were we were like Duke and Michigan State and Kentucky and we were that we were a top five perennial yeah. team my yeah. a lot of my childhood um, and uh, to see the last 15 20 years has been really difficult so my my you mentioned my girls and my coaching their yep. their teams they're really into sports in particular basketball and and they've never seen us be what I got to see as a yeah. kid and so i'm hopeful that uh, you know mike anderson did a really good job of of uh getting us to a much better place than we've been over the last uh you know decade before he got sure. there he really did there were a lot of problems that people really don't outside the program don't understand um but i'm really excited about coach mossum I, I i haven't met him yet but i, I think he's going to do a really good job and right. i love the energy that he brings and and uh, he's he's already uh, doing things that um, you know haven't been done uh, with Arkansas basketball in, in a long time. So he's got he's got nothing him. but energy, man. And he's we've got some juice. He definitely you know? does. Well, what he did at Nevada was pretty special and pretty, so he, pretty awesome. Yeah, and it was funny that when I did that piece that night, um, it was a bunch of let's say well lubricated Capitol Hill staffers mm -hmm. watching this game in a bar, and I'm from New York City completely unfamiliar with the Arkansas Razorback program other than having watched them on TV had never heard the pig suey chant before in my <laughs> entire life and uh it was unique let's put yeah. it that way it was I was exposed to it the first time like what are these people saying yeah. and they explained to me you there's know, a lot of lions tigers and bears out there there ain't but one Razorback <laughs> That was not how it was described to me, but I completely understand it. <laughs> uh, late night and Love late it. nights and long necks available Friday, uh, July twenty sixth. The lead single, the ones that didn't make it back home, was released uh, last October. It is great to see you, sir. Thank you for great being to see you. Thank you so much for having me back. Justin, I really you're, appreciate you know, it. Anytime you want to come on, talk music, talk football, talk about I would whatever love you want to talk about. Releasing 40 Minutes of Hell on some unsuspecting other uh, girls' basketball teams. I like it. Yeah. Okay, very good. Good Boop to big. Yeah, <laughs> good to see you. You'd see you. That's too. Justin Moore, at Justin Colmore on both Twitter and Instagram. For more of The Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download The Rich Eisen Show app.